Okay, so originally I planned for this video to have no music and instead rely entirely on the game sounds, but I had too many instances of clips with too much unwanted audio for that to work. So instead, I'll be playing Tanaka's theme from Persona 3. After all, I am, in a way, trying to sell you on Persona 4 Arena. If someone asked me what the unique aspect of Persona's gameplay was, I'd have a few different answers I could give them. The status elements, shadow characters, awakening. But the first thing I'd always point out is the personas. I guess it shouldn't be surprising, it's in the name of the game, it's pretty integral to the series as a whole. Though, if I'd only seen gameplay of the JRPG, I'd be clueless as to how well these personas would be converted into something playable for a fighting game. Well, here's how. Persona 4 Arena is a four button game with this layout. A and B are the character's buttons, and C and D are the Persona's buttons. The character's buttons aren't too out of the ordinary from what you'd find in many other fighting games, but they only make up half of a moveset. The Persona buttons is where the gameplay gets interesting. Persona attacks are not strictly better or worse than the characters, they're just different buttons with a different purpose that work with the character to make a fully realised moveset. However, Persona attacks have unique properties tied to them. With many Persona attacks, the Persona will remain out for a short while after the attack is finished. With Persona Displacement, don't ask me why it's called this, your Persona can perform attacks again in the place where they left at. This opens up several opportunities for new pressure and mix-up situations. On top of this, every Persona is disjointed from the character themselves. Since they're separate, putting them in the line of fire will cause no harm to your character. Well, at least not immediately. You see, you can't have all these perks without a drawback, of course. Under your health bar are Persona cards, which are like a health bar for your Persona. Like I said, on many Persona attacks, the Persona will remain out for a short while afterwards. Well, during this time, the Persona is vulnerable to being attacked. Each time a Persona is successfully attacked, a Persona card will break. It's also worth mentioning that a card will break if your own character is attacked while a Persona is still on the screen. When the last Persona card is gone, you become Persona Broken. When in this state, you're no longer able to use any attacks that require your Persona, including your Burst, so yes, you're locked out of Burst. And you'll have to wait until all of your cards have recovered before you can begin using any Persona attacks again. This is how things can get interesting. In your average match of Persona 4 Arena, the Personas add an interesting dynamic to the fight. Persona attacks are half of your moveset, but every time one is used, you risk losing a card if things don't pan out the way you'd hoped. Thus, although your Persona attacks can lead to several different kinds of rewards, they must be used with careful consideration. Otherwise, reckless use of your Persona will have dire consequences. Though of course, not all characters are the same. Some characters rely on their Personas more than others, and some barely use them at all. In Ultimax, characters were given a unique number of Persona cards corresponding to how frequently they'll use their Persona during gameplay. A pretty good rule to follow is that the more Persona cards a character has, the more they rely on Personas in their moveset, and vice versa. Akihiko is one of the few characters that can honestly run his entire game plan without using his Persona at all, and as a result, he has only a measly two Persona cards. Not that he really cares how little there are. Okay, different song. Meanwhile, a character like Elizabeth, who is heavily dependent on her Persona, has six Persona cards. This is the second highest amount in the game, only second to her sister, Margaret, who has eight. Elizabeth depends on her Persona more than almost anyone else in the cast, and that's why this video is going to be taking a quick look at her gameplay to highlight one of the unique appeals of Persona. Elizabeth depends on her persona, Thanatos, in neutral, pressure, and in combos. She doesn't need it when defending because defense isn't a concept that exists for this character. 5C is a good neutral tool and a great combo starter, but most importantly, it's integral to her pressure. When blocked, it will still put distance between Elizabeth and her opponent, and Thanatos will remain on the screen for a while, allowing her to take advantage of persona displacement. This is where the mind game begins. Anything Thanatos can do from here can be stopped by the opponent killing Thanatos and breaking a card. Anything except for 2C, Thanatos' only button with super armor. If the opponent pushes a button to punish 5C, but Elizabeth cancels it into 2C, the opponent eats a combo like the one you just saw. If the opponent chooses not to press anything, Elizabeth can avoid pressing 2C at all, 
and instead reset the situation with 5c again until the opponent eventually gets impatient, or Elizabeth's 2c gets blocked, which would then mean a free opportunity to hit Thanatos, break one of Elizabeth's Persona cards, and end her pressure. With the added ability to charge 2c and Ultimax, there are more layers to this mind game, but it's fundamentally the same. Needless to say, it would be a bit of a problem if she could constantly do this without any consequence. It's low-risk, disjointed pressure that has good reward if the opponent tries to break Thanatos at the wrong time. In most other fighting games, this would be way too strong, but in Persona, it works. Even though Elizabeth has six of them, losing Persona cards is still something you want to avoid, especially with Elizabeth. In the event that Elizabeth's persona does actually break, she is completely and utterly worthless, more so than the rest of the roster. Plus, because she has more cards than average, it also takes longer than average for her to recover from persona break. In exchange for being so safe, Thanatos pressure doesn't heavily favour Elizabeth like most other characters' standard pressure would. It's not uncommon for Thanatos pressure to end with a broken Thanatos and one less persona card. Therefore, taking your chances on Thanatos pressure all the time is absolutely not the way to go about playing the character. As a result, the Persona card and Persona break system balances Thanatos pressure by itself. Elizabeth has enough cards to risk throwing some away while using this fairly low risk pressure, but the limited number of cards also prevents her from spamming this pressure, which without Persona break could be a bit much, but because Persona break exists, it would very quickly lead to her decapitating her entire moveset. <laughs> Elizabeth is a character that shows off one of the biggest draws of the game, the Personas, very well. But that's not the only appeal of Persona. I could still talk about status elements, shadow characters, or awakenings, but that probably belongs in another video. This one ends here, so... Thank you so much for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it, or subscribe if you want to see some more, and if you really want to, leave a comment because all of these things make me feel extremely good. Other than that, I'll see you in Persona releases, I'll see you again when the rollback is out, hooray! I love good news, love good news, I just love good news! <laughs> and until next time.